And then, you know, like people would say, hey, did you know in college that Jordan was going to be great? Like, yeah, yeah, we did. We knew. When you played against him and Len Bias and Ralph Sampson, you're kind of going, all right, whoever said all men are created equal, (laughs) that's BS. Like, that's just not true. When we talk about Michael Jordan, we're talking about a lot of remarkable things. A life full of stories, accomplishments, and success in practically every way. MJ is a legend not only among basketball fans, but also among all sports fans, regardless of which sport they play or watch. Jordan is a brand, not just for his shoes, but for everything he stands for. Meeting him is a dream come true for every basketball fan, including present and former NBA players. Interviews have been done on anyone who has met Michael Jordan, including friends, former teammates, rivals, bosses, and employees, to find out how they felt at the first time they met the GOAT. They received a wide range of responses, from his days as a collegiate football player to his current position as the owner of the Charlotte Hornets. We plan on telling you all about them in this video. Dominic Wilkins, one of the all-time great dunkers who lost to Michael Jordan in the 1988 dunk contest, knew his airness from his college days and will never forget him. He was something else, something else, man, Wilkins said. I remember him walking into our locker room in Chicago, and he walked right by me. And I'm like, what the hell is he coming in our locker room for? As he walked by me, walked by Kevin, and he tapped Randy Whitman on the leg and he said, lace him up, it's going to be a long f***ing night. And he walked out, he had 60 that night. Jordan's longtime agent, David Falk, recalled meeting Michael when he was a skinny freshman in North Carolina. He went on to claim that their first official meeting was in 1984 when they had a meeting and discussed with MJ about things they could do better while Michael merely observed and analyzed what was being said. It was a fluke. It wasn't really a planned meeting, but we had a lot of clients from the University of North Carolina, Falk said. I had a client named Michael O'Corin who played for New Jersey. We had to do something. I had to do something with him in the western part of North Carolina. We actually drove out there, and when we finished, we stopped by Coach Smith's office to let him know that everything had been taken care of. I'm in his office, and these two freshmen walk in. One's a guy named Linwood Robinson, who I never heard of, but he was the stud recruit. And the other was a tall, skinny freshman named Michael Jordan. And Coach Smith said, David, say hi to Michael Jordan. I remember God. This guy's shoulders were broad. He was really skinny, and that was it, like a one-minute meeting, which to this day, he doesn't remember. Jordan's Robin, Scottie Pippen, recalled Jordan's demeanor when he first entered the NBA. Scottie's rookie season was Jordan's third in the league, and circumstances between Michael and Pippen were rocky from the start. Michael was a little distant. He was competitive. That was kind of his drive in those days, Pippen said. I remember Michael said, Well, we got another one of those Arkansas boys when I was drafted. Knowing the Bulls had drafted Pete Myers, he was an Arkansas kid from the University of Arkansas. He was actually from Mobile, Alabama. That's kind of all I remember. One of Jordan's most memorable rivals, Gary Payton, believes he sent a message to the Chicago Bulls legend during his first season in 1990. Jordan, he had no idea, was planning to cook him once they met during the regular season. I went at him in the preseason and he didn't forget it, Payton said. We played him for the first time in the regular season. He walked on the court, and I was talking mad crazy. He only played like 8, 9, 10 minutes in the preseason game, and he went over and told BJ Armstrong and Pippen, I got the rook. I got him all night. He got me in foul trouble real quick. I sat down. He played like 10 minutes of the game. He had like 35 points. He walked over and said, young fella, preseason ain't what's happening. This is what's up. It was like, welcome to the NBA, and many more. Steve Kerr, who won several championships with Jordan, also recalled meeting the number 23. Kerr said he thought he was doing a terrific job guarding Jordan until he discovered that his opponent had not taken a single shot during their first meeting. I think guarding him was the first time I actually saw him, Kerr said. Craig Ello was injured, so I started at the two in that game. I guarded Michael and he guarded me. Talk about the all-time mismatch physically. I was a buck 80. I remember I made the first shot of the game with him on me, felt really good about that, and then six minutes into the game, he hadn't scored. I was thinking, sitting there during a timeout, Michael hasn't even scored yet. I'm doing pretty well. I thought about it, and I realized he hadn't even taken a shot yet. He's been passing to all his teammates. Why hasn't he shot yet? And then over the next four minutes, he just torched me, made like six straight shots, and then Larry Wilkins took me out. By the end of the game, he had like 48, I finished with two. Just that first bucket of the game. That was my welcome to the Michael Jordan world moment. 
Dwayne Wade, a rookie, met Jordan in the strangest of circumstances. Wade's draft party in Chicago was closed off to Michael. The Miami Heat guard couldn't believe what he was seeing and went to see Jordan, who merely wanted to say hello. I just got drafted to the Heat, and then going back to Chicago after that, they had a big draft party, Wade said. And I'm inside the draft party, and it was popping. I remember my cousin came and got me, and he was like, yo, Jordan's here. They won't let him in. I'm like, what, man? Stop playing with me. And he was like, bro, I'm serious. Michael Jordan is outside with like 50 people. They won't let him in. So we run out the door, run up the front where they won't let him in. Why y'all won't let Jordan in? Somebody was like, he wouldn't pay. I'm like, what? So I run outside and Michael Jordan is out there on a motorcycle surrounded by like 30 dudes. I run up to him. I'm in awe, of course, a young kid. And he said, I just wanted to come by and show you some love. I think he said something about them tripping at the front or something like that. But he's like, I just wanted to come by and show you some love. Congratulations on being drafted. And I was like, man, thank you for coming. I couldn't believe it. Thank you for coming. You want to come in? And he's like, nah, nah, we good. I just came by to show you some love. And he rode off on his motorcycle. And it's like a scene out of a movie. And I'm walking closer and closer. And I'm like, this is like, this is my idol. Like, this is Jordan. And he stopped by and he said, he just want to show me some love. Did you invite him in? I did. But he was, he was like, no, no, no. They already denied me once. Like, I'm... <laughs> Doc Rivers, the former head coach of the Los Angeles Clippers, first met Michael in a high school showcase before facing the GOAT in the NBA playoffs. He was a junior in high school and I was a senior, Rivers said. Everybody was talking about Buzz Peterson. Buzz was my roommate at the sports festival. And then the game starts. And as we were leaving, I said, I don't know about Buzz Peterson, but whoever that Michael Jordan guy is, he is going to be amazing. And unfortunately, I was right. Chris Mullen, a Golden State Warriors hero and Jordan's Dream Team colleague, claimed that he had known his airness since they were both teenagers, with Michael immediately impressing him. It was at a McDonald's All-American game in Wichita, Kansas, Mullen said, and I remember we had one of those early morning practices and everyone was kind of sitting around, trying to wake up, and he was out there running around, dunking already. It was like, who is this guy? Michael Jordan is regarded as one of the greatest basketball players of all time. He won six championships, six NBA Finals MVP awards, 10 scoring titles, five MVP awards, 10 All-NBA First Team honors, nine All-Defensive Team First honors, 14 NBA All-Star Game selections, three All-Star Game MVP awards, the 1988 NBA Defensive Player of the Year award, and much more during his 15 seasons in the league. He's also regarded as a cultural icon. He's the first athlete to reach the $1 billion mark, and his Air Jordan sneakers have become a cultural icon since their introduction in 1984. But what makes Michael Jordan so legendary is the myths and stories that have amassed throughout his time as a pop culture phenomenon. His insane competitive streak, notorious gambling habits, and harsh treatment of teammates place him in a class by himself. The kid is just an absolutely uh, great kid. If I were going to pick uh, the three or four best athletes I've ever seen play basketball, he'd be one of them. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe.